These are the men and women who help teach the faith and spread the light of God in this world. This is Pastor Stories. With Center Broadcasting Company, this is Justin Mott continuing our pastor series. Today we have Pastor Bobby Bresman with the Center First Baptist Church. Now, up first, what got you involved in the ministry? Well, uh, my father died when I was 17 years old, and after that, uh, we became very involved in church uh, for a number of years. I became a Christian when I was 17 years old, and at that point, uh, the first time the man preached a sermon called The Wheat and the Tares, he described the wheat and the, the, the tares, the weeds, growing up in the same field, but in the end, the harvester would come and separate them. And I knew that night that uh, I was doing everything a Christian would do as far as actions, but I'd never asked Jesus into my heart. But I thought, well, what what are people gonna think if I actually let it out that I became a Christian uh, tonight, not way back then? And the next night he preached a sermon called, uh, don't let what people are gonna think keep you out of heaven. And I, I, in my mind, my little pea brain mind, I, I, I said, but God, look at all these things I've done. And the next night he preached a sermon about uh, there's nothing you can do that can keep you out of heaven or get you into heaven unless it's through Jesus Christ. And I was under so much conviction that the next night I just skipped, but I had to be there on, on the Friday night uh, to be a counselor. And that night the man preached and I have no idea what he preached on, but at the end of the, at the, end of the service we had what's called an invitation for people to come and accept Jesus Christ. and I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior that night. I gave up a lot of, of my dreams over the course of the next couple of years. Uh, originally I wanted to be a uh, psychologist or a uh, Christian counselor, but uh, God eventually led me down, down the road to uh, go into full-time ministry. And I did that for about uh, 20, 25 years. And at that point, uh, a lot of burnout and pain had had come into our lives and I needed to take a break and I, I worked for a company called Cox. Uh, it's a major company out of Atlanta in their automotive division and over the next uh, three years God led me down a, another path to uh, work in the secular world uh, being a regional strategist and if, if churches would take the same amount of effort that car dealerships do in selling cars and apply that to reaching people there wouldn't be an empty uh, pew in any church whatsoever, but God God took those three years that I was out of ministry in, in is what some people say it But I had more spiritual conversations as someone who was not a pastor as I do with being a pastor But God led me to this. It, it's a great church First Baptist Church uh, it's, it's it's a fantastic church with uh, good godly people in it a lot of times we get the the stick this the stipulation that we're the big red brick church downtown that's all you know just old and traditional uh, we have old people we have young people we have middle-aged people and at our church we're really trying to reach entire families whether you're you're a single person one person family all the way to great 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 grandparents and it's it's a blessing to serve at that church and lastly, do you have any advice to give to people that want to be involved in the ministry? Yeah, uh, looking forward into the future. Uh, my son is going into the ministry. He's studying at UT Tyler right now. And one of the things I've told him is the future of ministry, I believe, is going to be what's called bivocational. It's where you're, uh, you're a pastor, but you're also working full time in another uh, job during the week. And the reason I say that is a lot of it comes from those three years that um, I worked at Cox. Um, God took the lessons that he had taught me in ministry and I was able to apply those into the secular marketplace and be able to ramp up and impact people's lives. Not just selling cars, but actually impacting people's lives. I did something sim uh, very simple. Every dealer that I, I met with, I said, hey, if, if you ever need me to pray for you, uh, Here's my personal cell phone number. And all you have to do is text me, pray, and I'll, I'll pray for you right then. But after business hours, give me a call and uh, if you wanna let me know what I'm praying for you about. That was almost six years ago when I started that. 
And even to this day, I get uh, a text at least once or twice a week from somebody in Louisiana or Arkansas or Texas, one of my car dealers, and just say pray. And I'll talk to them at night and uh, help them through because there's a lot of pain in the world that uh, I believe the closer a pastor gets to uh, every, everyday life and not just in a holy tower, uh, the more effective they are.